already found the scaly breasted kingfisher, but I didn't see it yet. It's raining a lot. Unfortunately, it's going on also here in the forest. And we are close to its nest. And we are expecting to arrive one of the adult individuals soon. So wish us luck. I'm not the only one here today, of course, because it's a rare bird. I'm here with another dining. And he's from Singapore. No, I'm from Jakarta. Are you from Jakarta? So, and with his best friend. And we are, we are trying to find it. So wish us luck. And there it is, the scaly kingfisher, also known as scaly breasted kingfisher. I arrived early morning at this mountain to find it. In the forest we have been searching for it yesterday, but seeing this elusive bird needs lots of luck or patience. I concluded it's rather patience, since they are very territorial birds and most of them roost in lower tree branches. I met my friend and guide Esli Kakawe here with his two clients and he definitely knew the best spots to look out for them. After one hour searching, he had located this beautiful female here. I was not quite sure if the huge hype around it was justified, but when I had seen it finally with my own eyes, I was thrilled and indeed fell in love with this beauty. Most bird watchers are happy to have gotten a few good shots of their target species, but I wanted to experience more of its behavior. So I decided to spend the next hours in this little forest patch to film it. And by making minimal noise and movements, it appeared to be a very relaxed, almost tame bird. The scaly kingfisher is endemic to Sulawesi and two subspecies are classified, which differ slightly in colorization and range. A third one might be existing in the south of Sulawesi, but more research is needed since it's only known from two collected specimen. I'm filming a female of the nominate Actinoides princeps princeps, which range is declared to be northeast Sulawesi. It's quite large and between 24 to 25 cm long. It's classified as near threatened due to its increasing habitat loss and degradation increases in its hill and mountain forests. Its population size has been not quantified and it's not easy to count them since this bird is so inconspicuous. It might occur as low as 250 meter, but is most frequently encountered in between 900 to 2000 meter. I have never witnessed a kingfisher as marvelous as this and could not stop being fascinated.
forest destruction has been extensive in recent decades on Sulawesi and the rate of forest loss in lowlands and foothills seems also higher. The forests are cleared for transmigration settlements, agricultural and infrastructural development and large sale logging. Males from this beauty might be a bit more vocal and have fully blue heads and above to rufous tinged collar. It is the first forest kingfisher I have met and it does not require any water body nearby. It also nests here on the forest on a steep slope where it excavates nest tunnels in earth banks. Only few bird watchers worldwide have been lucky enough to see this secretive bird in the wild and the rarity of sightings grow passionate about the bird. Yet I'm not sure if it does do this kingfisher any good if more and more birders are on their way daily to find it. Often less disturbance is more protection, so I decided not to name its exact location here. Loud to hear, but almost impossible to see, are those Isabelline bush hens, which are calling now. In four days time, I didn't manage to get one glimpse of them. This is from the spot where we found it first. And yes, being well protected against mosquito bites is definitely required at Kingfisher sites. met a forest worker here who was also fascinated by this kingfisher and joined me filming it. We could only share a few words of understanding, but his palm juice from the Soho palm called Saguea was one of the most delicious sweet natural drinks I ever had. Fortunately his practice doesn't destroy trees and forests. Enough of talking, enjoy the forest bird sounds.
I've seen it taking off for some food on the forest floor. I had no clue how it had spotted it so quickly, but it always returned after a few seconds with its meal in its beak, here with some earthworm. It may eat insects and beetles, cicada nymphs and small lizards as well. But this meal was ooh, well, disgusting maybe. how it shakes its head. Hmm, and seriously, I wouldn't like to eat earthworms either.
While I didn't bring any rain protection for my cameras, it started heavily raining here on my last day. So I could only protect my film cam with some palm leaves and hope it wouldn't die. But look how not wet this amazing healthy bird stays. Nature is wonderful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. More birdie films will follow.